G'day and welcome to another video with Better Picks. Hope this finds everyone well. Just wanted to create a very quick video today looking at the benefits of using uh, curves adjustments in Adobe Camera Raw. Now the wonderful thing about curves adjustments is they have pretty much always been available within Photoshop and uh, obviously with Adobe Camera Raw as well and they still are um, to be considered one of the most powerful tools for making adjustments to your images although they do require a bit of understanding so hopefully this video today will help you to understand um, some of the principles around curves adjustments with Adobe Camera Raw. Now I've previously created a video on curves adjustments with Lightroom and the fundamentals are pretty much exactly the same in fact the tools are pretty much exactly the same um, so yeah for those of you who use Adobe Camera Raw more frequently then uh, this video is for you all right so you can see I've got a image here that I photographed in Venice uh, it was photographed um, in the morning you can see that's uh, it's not early morning but it's still uh, um, definitely not in the middle of the day um, and you can see that the sky is quite bright there and we've got some uh, sort of more mid-tones as you can see along the front of the buildings here and some darker areas as well so there's a little bit of contrast there i wouldn't say that it's a high contrast image because of there's no, there's not a, a huge number of uh, dark areas and shadows but certainly there's some contrast in the image and the highlights as you can see uh, are quite bright if we look at our histogram up on the top right hand corner you can see that big spike on the right hand side indicating those highlights are there all right so you can see I am in the curves adjustment tab here I haven't made any other adjustments to this image as yet uh, I just wanted to show uh, a little bit of or go through a, little, a few of the tools that are there uh, and just to explain exactly what they mean the first major one is if we have a look at uh, next to adjust we have what's called um, the edit the parametric curve now what that basically means is, is that you're editing areas uh, within the curve uh, rather than specific points. Now moving along you can see that there's another option just to the right, click to edit point curve and this means that you're able to create points along the curve and obviously move them up and down. Uh, you can see that uh, it's having quite an effect on the image there. Uh, if we double click on those points we return back to the original the original curve. So what you've probably noticed when I made those few adjustments then is that on the left hand side at the bottom here this area of the curve affects the shadow areas whereas on the other end up on the top right hand corner this area affects the highlights and if we look at the middle section here if I just put a little point there this area affects the midtones. Now if I just click that point and push it up you can see the whole image becomes brighter and if I drag that point in the opposite direction you can see the whole image becomes darker now at the same time you can see that the very bottom left hand and very top right hand there's points there as well and they control the highlights and when I make a single point or in fact many points within the curve and adjust those points those bottom left and top right hand points become what's I guess I describe as anchor points so they stay where they are so that means that that uh, point of the shadow and the highlight area isn't going to change unless we grab that point and we change it. And you can see if I drag that up, it lifts the levels of the shadows. And if I drag it across, it darkens the shadows. Same with the highlights. If I lift it and take it across, it crushes or removes detail in the highlights. Whereas if I take it down, you can see that it's flattening the highlights and trying to recover some of the detail there, which unfortunately in this image, we have lost a little bit of detail in those highlights. All right, let's double click on that control point. We'll take it back to the very beginning. You can see now we have a red, green and blue option there as well. If we click on that red one, you can see that we're actually now only increasing or decreasing the red channel. So you can see if I increase, there's more red put into the image. And if I decrease, it takes more red out, which obviously leaves us with more cyan. Double click that one to go back to the beginning. If we go to the green, if we increase it, we have more green. We decrease it, we have more magenta. And exactly the same with blue. If we go to blue, we increase, we have more blue. And if we decrease, we have more yellow. 
All right. So you can see that even within the curves, not only does it affect brightness and contrast, but it also affects color. So for example, if we wanted to, we could put on the blue channel, we could put yellow into the shadow areas. And on the red channel, we could put uh, red into the highlights. Now you can see we can actually put multiple control points there as well. So we have a greater level of control over what color goes where. And yep, that looks great. And so you can see that um, the control of color as well as brightness and contrast is quite extensive within the curves adjustment tool. I'm just gonna double click those again, just to take us back to the beginning. Excellent, and I'm gonna go back to that original edit of the point curve. Now I'm just going to make a bit of an adjustment, an extreme adjustment, just so that it looks really obvious. And you can see up here on the curves tab that there's a little, what looks like a little eye. And if I click and hold that, you can see it actually removes any of the effect that we've made with the curves adjustment tool, just to see what the original image looks like. Now that's only affecting the curves tab. If we go into basic and I make a really big temperature change and we go back to curves again that temperature change is sticking because that little eye only affects the tab the, of the adjustment that I've actually made so at the moment I'm turning on and off the curve adjustment but the color temperature adjustment within the basic tab remains intact as you can see we've still got that increase in warmth all right I'm just gonna take that back to what it originally was and if we go back to our curve we can take that back to what it originally was as well. So the curve is a very interesting tool. And as I said, it's one that has been around for quite some time and gives us a lot of flexibility on what we can do with our image. Now, if we just look at brightness and contrast, for example, if we wanted to increase contrast, if we drop the shadows a little bit and increase the highlights, you can see that the image now has a greater level of contrast than when we started. Conversely, if you want to decrease contrast by increasing the shadows and decreasing the highlights, you can see that we have a flatter image with less contrast. And if we look at the before and after, that gives us a clear indication of what that adjustment has actually done. Now, if I want to only drop the highlights, but I don't want to affect the midtones and shadows, I can put multiple, as I've done in the past, multiple adjustments in place just in that highlight area so that I am only affecting mostly the highlights of the image. If we look at before and after, you can see that we have actually dropped the highlights, a little bit of the mid-tones there as well. And that image has had those highlights adjusted. So as I said before, with those two control points, you can take control of the shadow areas, either increasing the shadow areas or decreasing the shadow areas so they become darker. And you can see that's putting more contrast into the image. Same with the highlights. If you go across, you're increasing the brightness of the highlight areas. Or if you come down, you're decreasing the brightness of the highlight areas. Now what happens if we go to the extremes and we take it to the opposite side? It turns into a negative. So this is what the image would look like if it was shot as a negative. In fact, this is a common method for people who are scanning film, scanning negatives, and they need to turn them into a positive. So they use this reverse curve technique and it turns their image into a positive, which is a really interesting method of doing that. So it also allows you to then consider different effects that you can give your images. As you can see, we've turned this image into a negative and of course, bringing that curve back to its original starting point, we can go back to the image being a positive as it was shot, uh, in this case digitally, obviously. And we're back to our starting point. Curves is a fantastic tool. It has a lot of power and a lot of precise control, not only over brightness and contrast, but also over color adjustments to different parts of the image. So it's definitely worth investigating to see if it is a tool that is useful for your workflow and hopefully it will uh, help you to achieve the look with your images and the edits with your images that you're hoping to achieve. Thanks for stopping by. Hope you've enjoyed this video. As always, any questions are welcome in the comments below. Otherwise, we look forward to seeing you next time. Take care.